gang, it's Will from Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. Norman Chan, it's time for our Week of Builds. Week of Builds. Week, week of, of Builds. Week of Builds. Today is this week. Uh, we are building. What are we building, Will? We're building this guy right here. So if you look, and I that is, nope, 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 one, one layer deeper. That is the Ergodox Ergonomic Mechanical Keyboard. We love mechanical keyboards. Why are we building a mechanical keyboard, Norm? Well, not many companies, well, there are companies who make mechanical keyboards, and I, I love them. I use a mechanical keyboard at home. I do too. But not many companies make ergonomic mechanical keyboard, especially the split keyboard style. In fact, like there's the basically two options on the market. They're both really expensive. And after doing a ton of research on it, because I like it, I like a split keyboard same as you do. Um, the thing that we came, the thing that I came up with is that the best option is to build your own. Build your own. So it's lightsaber for typing nerds. E exactly. Um, there's a company. Well, there's an open source project called Ergodox. That's that's this board right here. Um, and basically, it's a split keyboard design, two two individual components connected by a cable, and you can kind of type like this. It's hmm. Standard keyboard layout, um, but you can choose whatever kind of mechanical keys you want, which is the big advantage. The, the 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 ones that are already built for you, you have to basically take the keys that they sell, or maybe wait three months for them to make a run with the kind of keys, kind of switches that you want. So let's talk about mechanical key switches. And there's a ton of different mechanical key switches on on uh, mechanical keyboards. The most popular are the Cherry MX switches, uh, and they come in a variety of colors, and uh, the colors basically indicate the key behavior. So the color means nothing other than it indicates, hey, this switch does have a bump that tells you when it's actuated, and it releases at the same space it's actuated. This one actuates lower than it releases, and it doesn't have a bump, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, it's lower meaning you have to press, to press harder. It has to press further down, further down. before the key yes. indicates it's pressed, mm -hmm. um, and it releases earlier or whatever. Um, the, basically, the easiest way to find out what, how you like something feels is to order a keyboard tester. They're like 15 bucks. It's usually six six switches on a little brick like this. They're not wired into anything, so it's not totally accurate. But you can tell how hard the spring requires you to press. For example, these clears, you have to press a little bit harder than the Don't browns. Like uh, the reds are uh, kind of like the browns, but without the, the clicky feel. Um, some are quieter than others. You can also do things like pop the keycaps off and then put the little rubber gaskets on that make them even a little bit quieter if you want to experiment with that. So it gives you a good way to figure out if you even like the way these sound and feel. Once you've done that, then the next step is to, um, well, source all the parts for the Ergodox. So Mastrop does sell kits uh, occasionally, uh, pretty regularly actually, uh -huh. um, and what you get in the kit is most importantly this. So you get, you get actually all the stuff that we have here. Um, and they, they are also doing Ergodox variants. So they just ran a Ergodox Infinity, mm -hmm. which uses a different controller, and it's a more advanced version. It's endorsed by the original by the original designer. He likes the new design. Um, so what makes up an Ergodox? So an Ergodox is basically two of these boards. Okay. Um, and so. they're reversible. So they're they're the same board as for the left hand and right hand. You just solder mm -hmm. stuff on the opposite sides for the right side versus the left side. Cool. Um, you need switches. So I think it's 80 some switches. Usually you have to buy, um, if you're not getting it from Mastrop, when they give you a set of exactly what you need, um, we had ended up buying extra switches because it was cheaper to buy a dozen or two more and get the lower price than yep. it was to get the uh, the exactly the number we needed. Oh, I got I love my blue switches for this. Great action. Oh, click. Yeah. I can hear it clicking click. already. Click, 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 click. Um, uh, and you, you can mix and match. You don't have to use yeah. you don't have to use all I mean the connectors are essentially the same. Mm -hmm. So you can you can have your WASD be clicky or not clicky. And, and everything else be clicky. And you don't have to buy cherry switches either. Most switches will fit on this board, so um, it's, like there's a lot of options out okay. there. Um, then you, ha you get a whole bunch of electronics. So we have a few hundred SMT diodes. Um, they're what makes the switches actually work. We have some uh, I.O. controllers. We have a couple of teensies, one for each of us. Teensy so boards. The Teensy board is an Arduino-compatible microcontroller, um, and it's what the, the Ergodox uses, the original Ergodox at least uses, to uh, control the keyboard. So you press a button, it sends a signal to the Teensy, the Teensy sends the right keyboard signal out to the computer. Um, it all happens very quickly. Okay. And then there's a bunch of other stuff like LEDs. These are more diodes. These are the through-hole ones. We're not going to use those. Um, and then the last part is a case. Mm. So there's a bunch of different options you can go with on the case. I'm going to show you two, two different versions of this. Um, 
So the the you can go to Shapeways and buy a really expensive 3D printed shell. So it doesn't come with the case is, doesn't come with a kit. If you buy for Ergodox, it does. Okay. If you source, if you source it yourself, it. like we did, then you have to either find a laser cutter, find somebody who'll cut some stuff for you, mm -hmm. or buy one of the expensive Shapeways 3D printed ones. And sourcing it ourselves, you can buy the boards. You can directly. buy the boards, you can buy the keycaps. These are the yep. things that go on the yep. switches. You can buy the switches. You can buy all of the individual components from DigiKey most of the time. Okay. Anybody who's worked with DigiKey for any appreciable length of time knows that Sometimes you'll go looking for something that seems really common, like a 10,000 ohm resistor, and they'll just be out for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so the way the case is made, made, most people make the case, is you laser cut multiple layers of acrylic. Um, mm -hmm. They recommend three millimeter and five millimeter, which breaks down to about one eighth and three sixteenths, yep, if you're in the, metro, in the imperial system. Um, I've left the casing on the ones that we're actually going to use so they don't get all scratched up before we start working on them. Mm -hmm. Peel them but, off later. But basically you have layers of plastic and then you screw them together at the end. So Got it's it. pretty straightforward. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Now it's just 400 solder points. So you can check if you want to buy a complete kit, mass drop. They just finished just, one. They just finished one uh, usually what, every month? Every typically, week. as soon as the last one fulfills, they start a new one. Okay. So it's Fairly usually simple. every two months, three months, something like that. And uh, what does a kit go for if you want to buy, <coughs> source everything uh, independently outside of the, the case, for it example? It depends on, well, you get the case with the, with the mass drop oh, kit. I'm saying like if you want to source yourself. Oh, if you want to source yourself, it was a little bit under 200 bucks for everything. Okay. Um, I ended up buying a couple of things in duplicate because I wanted to make sure it got here in time, so we spent a little bit more money than that. Okay. Um, and that's... Uh, that's counting the cost of the acrylic. Mm. Um, basically, it's two 17 by 29 sheets of acrylic fully cut out, one five millimeter, one three millimeter. Um, depending and it's on it's how all much mine. All the documentation and the specs are, or the, uh, the, the files are online for laser cutting. Yeah, so they have a GitHub. I was able to go to their GitHub, download the DXG files or DXF files, load them up into AutoCAD on Adam's Cutter. And after I worked through the intricacies of Adam's Cutter, mm -hmm. I, I had the cases already made. They're pretty good. Um, the uh, if you're buying the case, they're really expensive on Shapeways. Mm. If you have like a local hacker space that you can just pay for laser time, it's literally if you set up your plates well before you get to the laser, it'll literally be about 15 minutes of laser time. And in my understanding, that's usually 75 cents or a dollar per minute for laser time. So look at another 20 or 30 dollars for that, okay. um, assuming you're efficient with your use of time. Cool. Should we get started? Let's get started. So this first uh, episode of this week of build, we're doing multiple weeks. So surprises later on. But uh, first episode is available for everyone. If you want to follow along and watch us build throughout the week, go to tested.com slash premium to sign up. And you can see how this project ends up. I hope well. Once it's done, I think we'll probably do a show and tell with one of the completed keyboards is my right. assumption. OK, so we're going to start. We're each going to do a different hand to start. OK. Um, and we're each building our own keyboards. But I'm not exactly sure how long this is going to take. Mm -hmm. So, so that this doesn't end up being three weeks of builds. Let's you let's, do a left. I will do a left and hand. And I'll do a right to start. Okay. This um, one says left hand. So right there. It's important when you're reading the instructions. Some of the stuff they want you to solder on the bottom. So if you're soldering, if you're doing the left hand, that means you're going to solder it on the on the right side. So don't don't make the don't mess that up. Basically, all right, is all let's, I'm saying. Well, we should lay out all our pieces. <coughs> um, and if you want to follow along in the instructions, we're not going to lay out all of our pieces because they're too small and we'll lose oh. them if we have to break down in between days. Solder um, the surface mount diodes. If you want to follow along at home, you can go to ma search for mass drop ergodox assembly instructions, and that that's the instructions we're working off of. Oh boy. All right. Let's describe what what, what is this first step we're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is solder diodes. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the 1N4148W-7F diodes. Um, we, each, we need to put one on each of the switch. You want to describe what type of equipment you're using as well? Um, yeah, so I got a new soldering iron recently, which I'm kind of excited about. I've never had a nice soldering iron before. Um, I'm just going to cut this in half. Um, and it's a HACO. It's a low-end HACO. If you want to get crazy, you can spend thousands of dollars on HACO soldering irons. This one was mm -hmm. about 100 um, And after I use it on this, I'll do a show and tell with it as well. So I probably wouldn't use either of the ones on the sides of that chop. Okay. Um, but these you have go... snips for me? Uh, yeah. You don't need to snip those off. They just pop off. All right. Perfect. Um, a pair of tweezers might have been a smart thing to have yeah. here. Do I have one of those? Uh, yeah. I, nope, nope. Hold on. I'm going under the desk. 
All right, so diodes, you gotta sur solder the surface mount diodes onto the back side of the PCB for both the left and right hand sides of the PCB. So this so is the back side. You're gonna start with the right side. I'm gonna start with the left side. So it shows us where to put them, right? Where it says right hand is where I'm gonna solder. <coughs> and I'm soldering on the left hand side, yes. Okay, and this is on the bottom of each key. Uh, the very bottom um, actually has squares. Tells you exactly. Oh, it's those two, two flush squares? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay, the um, pictures here are really good. Hey, Benito. And you need solders for every single one. Actually, I'm just gonna one walk of over these. there. Oh, boy. I'm walking out of frame, I apologize, internet. Alright. Will's grabbing, I believe grabbing some, uh... Some tweezers some to tweezers. make this a little bit easier. While you're, while you're up, Will. Yeah. I don't know if you're still I'm might. not unhooked, Norm. Okay, well, never mind. I'm just gonna bring a bunch of different kinds of tweezers. These are okay. all iFixit tweezers. That sounds good. And we non magnetic can uh, it doesn't matter if they're magnetic or not for this, but they should be. Popping these diodes out. From the My hunch is that these are going to be uh, your winners, Norm. Fine tip, okay. But not pointy. Okay, so I would do them one at a time. Yep. Probably turn on your soldering iron. Uh, yep, yep. So the one you got, uh, so variable this is, temperature, how... Uh, it's the FX88D, and it actually gives you a temperature, which I like. Okay. So... What do you turn it to? Four... I don't know, it's getting hot really fast, though. That's good. Peel off this. Okay, um, I, let, I put the instructions on the ground. I haven't actually used it yet. Fantastic. You want to talk a little about those helper's hands? Uh, yeah, so the helper's hands... Oh, hellfire. How do, is there an easy way to get these things off? You or just gotta, I, you just gotta oh, you got to peel, peel that stuff from the back. Pour. Oh, wow. Peel and pour. Wow. And separate the ones you, got, you think are good and the ones you think are not so good. Do you think that oh some boy. look worse than others? Oh, Hellfire. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Have you ever done this? I've done... They're just spilling everywhere. They're tiny. They're super tiny. I'm going to only do this much for now. I have a, a bunch. But to show you guys, these diodes are like that big. Yeah, now they, you, they said you can do through-hole ones, but it's easier to do it with the flush mat with the SMTs because then the board will lay flat. Oh, boy. Um, okay. So, I, I think I made better tweezers. You these. want the pointier ones? I want the okay. Pointy ones. Love the pointy ones. Okay. What I'm gonna do? So we're putting these on these little tiny pad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, little see. tiny pads. Uh, I think. And the see that there's an up and down. Boy, I wish I had my loop. This is gonna take forever. I think I'm gonna place a bunch of these and then solder them all at once. Okay. And just not move. And try not to move the board. Because this should good. go pretty quickly. So every key. Now, in terms of actually soldering these on, you want to talk about soldering um, technique for this small? Because this head, this head is, the tip of this soldering iron is pretty fat, and it's not flat either. So everything I read said to use the, the fat, bigger <laughs> tips for this. Fat so that you maintain contact less t for less time. Flatter tips. Yes. All right, not having the flat tips may be a problem, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the flat tip for that one. I think we took it out and it and it got lost. So we're just laying laying these like little bugs. This is not a good situation to use Adam's torch, butane torch ones though. Jeez, okay, these are really finicky. What's the temperature on the solder? Did I give you a, a strip of long solder? I do not have, I have the really give fat you the, solder. You, you want the I narrow want the solder narrow for this? Solder. Oh boy. Um, and you just watched the, uh, the, what I think is the internet's premiere how to solder video before we started this, Norm, right? The electrical engineering blog? Uh huh, the EEV blog. So the nice thing about doing this is if you miss one, then the whole keyboard won't work. That's awesome. No, that's not true. I think it's just the letter. The letter that you're on won't work. So the other neat thing about this is because you control the microcontroller too on this software, you can put whatever key layout you want on it. So if you want to do something crazy, 
there's this new thing, I, I guess it's new, I assume it's new, I don't know if that's actually the case or not, called Colmac, which a lot of programmers apparently use. Um, and the Colmac layout lets you, um, it's very similar to QWERTY, but it moves the, those very high frequency letters that you use often to places where your home keys are and moves stuff like F away. So, so you don't have to retrain your whole hand and learn all new muscle movements, memory. You just have to train a couple of fingers, a handful of fingers. Well, is there a left and right orientation for these? I don't think so. Did the instru I think if the instructions say there's a left and right, it matters. And if they do not, it does the not. The picture shows that the, the side with the line is on the right side. Oh, God, I can't even see the line. Does, did the instructions say it matters? Shit. Instructions are a little ambiguous. Instructions say, note that the cathode of the diode denoted with a line connects to the square pad on the PCB. Oh, fuck. Well, they're both square. Left, both oh. left and right side are it's, square. But, okay, so, but look, there's also they're also there for through holes. So, the th see the hole to the, directly to the left of those pads. That's the square pad. So ah. yes, it does matter. So yes. Oh hell, I can't even see these. I can kind of see. So the line goes on the right side. Oh man, every like you'd think I'd have a 50-50 chance of getting an occasional one right. And where are you uh, soldering these two? You're connecting just to the to squares? To these little pads, yeah. But not to the holes. No, no, you don't have to go to the holes. The holes are if you use, uh, like, you can also get, so when you're ordering it. stuff from DigiKey. So wait, have you I haven't put anything okay. on yet. I'm going to see I'm what your solder looks like. Lines. I don't think you should, we should put too many on. Well, why not? We have to do them all or else it's not going to work. I, I know, but I say we should start actually soldering because too many on, it's easy to they'll shuffle off with any movement. Oh, that's possible. So I'd say just put four or five on in place and then solder five at a time. Well, now that I have them all here, though. Oh, hell. Jeez, that line is... I can't even see these, th the lines. I wish I had the magnifiers. So it's 1408. Wow. Eyesight. The, this blue light in the studio doesn't help with this. I can, totally, I can read what it says, I think. You're also 10 years younger than I am, Norm. Woo! Almost got it. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, I oh got Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, uh, I got rows that are right. Okay, that one's wrong. But... Let's see. Do you think so you were going to do this off. kind of tiny soldering this morning when you woke up? I knew what I was going into. So it should just take a tiny, tiny amount of solder to attach these guys. Right. My, my fear is that there's too much. There's not, there's, this tip is really f fat cone. All okay. Right, I'm going to have to rotate this. Um, there's another one of those Weller soldering irons with a probably finer tip even, if you want. In my Jeez, no smoke. I don't want smoke. Um, one of the things you can do is tin the pads. <sighs> this is going to be very, very difficult. This is hard soldering. I think once you get a rhythm, it'll go fast. Oh boy, okay. So I have that right there. Where do I put my tweezers? Nope. nope. Yeah, this tip is real fat. I'm going to snip off the tip of this solder that's bubbled up. Okay. 
So if you get a little bit in the hole, it's not a big deal. Okay. Um, and I'm tinning the pads first. So I'm putting just a little tiny bit of solder on the pads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which seems to be helping. I think it, maybe I'd be, I'm trying to go, do it too, neat, too neatly. Yeah, this isn't going to be pretty. If you want it to be pretty, get a machine to do it. Oops. How many keys are on each side? Uh, 40, I think. And this is one part of one. Part one of two. Might have been a good idea to ask Jeremy if he had any SMT soldering tips. Iron hot. I'm gonna turn this down some more. I don't, I'm used to like medium ah. strength, not. It's not connecting for me. Oh, and also this, this iron is, this tip is just falling in. What the hell? Oh, you need a screwdriver. Yeah. Ugh. Turn this off. Here you go. There's one right underneath you. Fantastic. Okay, more tinning. It keeps going back to 750. Maybe 750 is the lowest it goes. There we go. And wait for this to cool off a little bit. Are well, you having success? I have two on, I think. Oh boy. You know what I didn't bring today is my multimeter. Test those connections. I'm just gonna start tinning pads like a madman. Um, so the nice thing is the pieces are small enough that they don't actually move off that much. I think that this is the worst of this also. Yes, this, I think this is clearly the worst of this part of today is going to be here, of this week. Of today. If I had to guess, it's going to be today and tomorrow. Um, so it just takes a ti the tiniest amount of solder to tin these. Like I'm just getting it on the tip and kind of brushing it on them and it sticks. And then cleaning it off occasionally. Turn right, back on. This crappy Weller. Hey, so we saw Ultron on Friday. I, ooh, let's talk about that on the podcast with Adam. Well, we can talk about it here, too, though. I think at this point, people will already have listened to our podcast with Adam oh. about it, hopefully. So maybe we'll do some back in time and say things and, and, and backtrack. That's true. Maybe not everybody who watches this listens to the podcast with Adam. Though. I would hope you listen to the podcast with Adam. Yeah, if you like the site, well... Um... Jesus. Come I on. have thoughts. That's the takeaway. I'm not, I'm not surprised. I think everyone who watches that movie has thoughts. Yes. They have invited thoughts, but their massive approach to superhero movie making. We're going to make 200 million bucks a weekend. Oh, come on. Jeebus. This is this is infuriating. 
All right, describe your technique um, right okay. now. So basically, I just touch the solder, just mm -hmm. the, the faintest amount, mm -hmm. to Which, the pad. To the pad, yes. Uh -huh. And let a little bit run off. I'm looking for like a little poof, not a spike. Mm -hmm. If I do a spike, I've made a mistake, probably. Mm -hmm. I think that is one connection. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is something anyone can do. That's what I keep telling myself. I think it is. Anyone can cook. Okay, these are upside down and sideways. How are you getting it to stick to the tin? It's more balling up. You're putting too much on. All it wants to do is ball up. I don't like it. Keep your tip clean, too. Mm hmm Good life lessons. Yeah. One more. The hard part for me is going to be seeing the, uh, um, what do you call it? The letters. The lines on the on the thing. Oh, there's one I missed. So you definitely don't want the solder touching the actual diode. Oh, I think it's fine if the solder touches the diode a little bit. Okay. I mean, ideally you wouldn't, but yeah, it's so small. Okay. We're putting the tiniest amount. Yeah. The problem I have is that seeing the actual line. It's pretty tough. Here wow. Too. Yeah, it is really the tiniest amount. Yeah, you want like just a little fraction. I mean, the nice thing is uh, you might want to cool your tip down too a little bit too. I had a little bit of better luck when I got way cool. All right. Of course, I haven't actually, I've only soldered two on so far, I think, so. Uh, my fourth. I don't think my helping hands are going to be particularly useful here. Not so helpful? No. They're just kind of more in the way hands. Hmm. I'm testing and see how good these connections are. Nudge are, these around. How are you That's testing good. just with the I'm physical? Physical connection. They seem to be bound on both sides and firm. Looks good. Sweet. Good man and thorough. So tiny, so tiny. How much more would it have cost for them to have these pre-mounted? Uh, probably like five, three cents a piece. That's times 40. Yeah, so a buck 20 a board. This is part of the process, man. I will say that I'm sure it's a pet peeve for anyone who actually does real work with electronics. To watch people like us solder? Well, one, to watch people like us attempt to solder, and two, to watch uh, Robert Downey Jr. solder in a movie like Avengers. I thought he did some okay soldering. That was not my complaint with the Avengers. And anytime he shows him fixing his Iron Man helmet by breaking out a soldering iron and... Do you think they get a soldering sponsorship? I'm sure someone has had that discussion. Ooh. Okay, I just hope that nothing as bad has happened to these diodes. They're connected, they're firm and in place. All seems Feeling well. confident, Norm? Just don't touch the soldering iron on the diode, and I yep. think you'll be okay. That's Ow, that's hot. First burn. It wasn't a burn. 
That's another fun thing. Let's see who burns first. Nope, that was just uh, that was just uh, I hit the I hit the end part, not the uh, Bernie part. I got too close to the tip. You can risk that shit. Yeah. So did you oh, like uh, uh, Avengers, Norm? Of course. Oh, it was fantastic. I, would watch, I, I want to watch it again. I would watch it again, actually. If I'm going to spend thirty dollars on a movie in theaters. Why did you spend? Oh, you bought two tickets. No, if I'm going to watch it again and spend a total of thirty dollars in a movie, twenty dollars for IMAX, and uh, hopefully, second time maybe a ten dollar matinee. I wish it was in two D. Well, it is in two D. You can watch in two D. I wish that we could have gotten tickets in two D. You could, you, you could have bought tickets in two D. Not really. There, yeah. It was Gary, Gary and Gina and Leah and I spent a fair amount of time looking for a showing. Joey, Joey saw it in two D over the weekend. He went. Where, where did he go? Kabuki. Okay, well, yeah, those were all sold out. Wait, well, by the time we went looking for tickets. He didn't buy it that far in advance. A week before. Should have looked harder. We have kid issues, too, so scheduling is a little more challenging, maybe. Yes, 2D is a diminishing proportion of the number of screens. Yeah, it fucking sucks. But I don't. it's far from impossible to find a... A decent 2D showing. Well, if you want to see IMAX, 2D is non option. Not an option. And I think part of it was that I went to see Fast 7 in IMAX a couple of weeks before. Okay. Um, and that was like, it was such a wonderful, unmuddied vi you know, visual experience. That was non 3D? Non 3D. Wait, that's interesting. I know. I thought I thought I was amazed that they leave money on the table on that big a franchise. Um, but I think those tickets were just as expensive as um, the Avengers tickets. If I had to guess, I could go look in Fandango and see. I, be I believe the 3D does have a, a little bit of a surcharge. 3D IMAX over. You, you have IMAX. to pay the glasses fee, right? Basically, pay the fee for the the person to wipe off the glasses after every screening. Really, somebody wipes off the glasses? Well, they're they're reused. Dropping more of these diodes out. Okay, I got my first batch of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sweet. I'm one fifth of the way there on wow. this side. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Done. I'm um, doing them a bunch at a time. Worked really well. Yeah, I'm gonna do one row at a time. Is what I'm gonna do. It sucks that we don't have a way to test these, the connections on these, other than that key won't work. Um, so I think when you set up the software, okay. basically you go through a process. Um, so the other benefit of using the Teensy is that for a c keyboard microcontroller, mm -hmm. it is, like Arduino is kind of woefully underpowered compared to say, you know, 8088 ancient x86 processors, right? Mm. However, compared to the kind of microcontrollers that run keyboards most of the time, it's a golden god. Mm. Or enough. So, mm. what can, what fancy things can you do using Teensy for keyboard purposes? Well, you can so you can like you can build macros, and the macros can be aligned with function keys. So, like you have a function key and you press that, and then a macro happens. Or you can do something crazy, like where you where you mash ASDF all at once. Like it just shuts down. It locks the computer and deletes all your stuff. Right? You can do whatever you want. Jeez. Alignment issues. I haven't gotten real deep on the software yet because I was didn't want to get the cart ahead of the horse. Assembly first. Assembly first. I'm just excited about a mechanical ergonomic keyboard. Now in terms of ergonomic keyboards, uh, this is as ergo as you can go. Um, no, the, there are some others. This is like the Kinematic and those guys. Um, but we're talking about uh, left and right halves are completely split. Yeah, like if you want to do the crazy thing where you hang one side off the chair down low at your waist and the other side off the other side of your chair down low at your waist, you can do that. Um, there are a lot of people who use a cording layout for this one. So you just use one hand always on one side. Do you want to explain what cording is? Mm, yeah, so cording it means that um, basically instead of typing... 
a single letter per key, you can you type the other letters with a combination of keys. So like. ESDF would be the same as normal, all one keys. But if you wanted to type the equivalents for the other side, then you'd press D and F at the same time. I, I don't know if that's mm. actually what it is. But it's um, like what court stenographers use uh, to, to get a lot of text, a lot of letters out of like five combos, fingers. which we're still talking about the opposite of macros, key combinations. Yes. Press multiple keys to represent one. Exactly. One action. And make sure you're getting the right direction on these two, Norm. I have, yep. I can see the lines. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Excellent. Woo. All right. Well, we're about a half an hour into this. How much more do you want to I say I think we should for finish this? one of these. I think we should finish the diodes. On finish this side. the diodes? Yeah. I'm like halfway done. Okay. Or, I mean, we don't have to. You should finish your diodes, and then we'll wrap up this one. Um, and then tomorrow, continue on the rest. But it is one of those things where once you get into a groove, it's doable. They're not the prettiest, but they're sufficient. No, this is not attractive soldering on my part. I have done much better soldering in many other projects. I can't tell if that's stuck or not. That looks pretty good. You can feel it if it's stuck. When, yeah, but what if, what if the side that you do first sticks really well? Mm -hmm. Sometimes hard to tell if that second side got enough. That's true. Now you uh, don't want the smoke. A little bit of smoke's not bad. That just means the flux is going up. Yeah, flux is burning. That's a, the, the yellow stuff. Ooh, that's not pretty. What's your current favorite keyboard that you're using? Um, I'm using that Logitech G G710, okay. the Orion Spark. Is that a, also a mechanical keyboard? It's mechanical. It uses their, they, they had, so at the volume at which Logitech works, mm -hmm. Cherry doesn't make keys, enough keys. So they needed to, ha to have a mechanical key that they could make in capacity, a mechanical okay. switch. Um, and it's pretty good. It's very similar to MX Brown, I would, is what I kind of feel like, which I like. That's my... That's my default go-to. If they had been in stock, I would have gotten them for this build. Um, but I couldn't find them available to ship in the time that we needed anywhere. Uh, I am using a Razor. I forget the exact model. Is it one of the newer mechanicals? No, it's, I've had it for several years now. Mm. But it is a mechanical keyboard. Is it blues? And it is all blues. Do you like the blues? And I love the blues. Love the clackety clack. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't necessarily want the clackety clack. I'm not averse to it, but it's music to my ears. Yeah, the, I have a sleeping child a lot of times. I mean, it's not loud enough that it will go through walls, but echoes in the room. Also, having something that sounds fun to a two-year-old maybe not the is best not the best move. Mechanical keyboard teaches typing. I've actually just gotten um, I got an old wireless keyboard that I don't use anymore, and just left it out and put it in her toys because she likes to bang on keyboards. Okay. Which has solved a lot of my keyboard woes. She would, she, you know, she'll come up and just start wailing on it mm -hmm, without mm -hmm. knowing that she's deleted three hours of work. It's like giving, a, it's like giving Maggie the steering wheel, the fake steering wheel. Yes, while she's in the car. Is that from the opening credits of The Simpsons? That is from the opening credits of The Simpsons. Wah, wah. Do, do, Have you watched do, The Simpsons lately? Nope. They've completely changed the opening credits of The Simpsons. How so? It's all new stuff. It's all new gags. You mean even the 
it's no no longer Bart writing on a chalkboard. Lisa playing. Uh, the chalkboard saxophone. remains. The couch gag is still there. It's no longer Homer at the plant. Zero days since last accident. I don't. You know, I don't know about that one. All I remember, I haven't watched Simpsons recently enough to tell you. Okay. But all I know is the last time I watched a new Simpsons, I was like, wait, something's changed. Hmm. Oh, boy. How you doing over there, Chan? Woo! You feeling good? Feeling good. Feel, doing the bull dance? Feeling the flow? Yep, 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 yep. My third row. Did you see that the Wired Science... Um, blog, the one that figures stuff out from movies, you know, like the one that figured out how much force the Hulk would have to exert on the ground in order to jump a quarter of a mile. Okay. Did The wide physics blog? The, yeah. Did the um, Happy Gilmore running tee shot, whether that would actually add force to the, uh, to the swing, or how much force that would add to the swing? And? I didn't read the blog post. I was interested to see oh, if you had I read it. I had not read it. I didn't know that was... Something we had tested or done the math on. Thought experimented. What's your, what's your, how are you fixing crookeds? Are you just bending them straight? Oh, yeah, that works. I'm burning, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, reheating up and. There we go. Returning them to the fold. Yeah, it's really difficult to tell whether you have the other side soldered on when you have one side soldered. Because mm -hmm. it is locked in place. Yeah, my fear is that I'll get going on these and then I'll have just shitloads of floating, hanging diodes. On one side. Yeah. I feel like that's going to happen to me. I don't know. Uh, and we have plenty of extra diodes, so... As I said, it was one of those things that, like... You got massive quantities of for two cents. Like when you went down to one cent each, all of a sudden you got twice as many for the same amount of money. That was kind of the neat thing about DigiKey. I hadn't bought a big order of stuff from DigiKey in a long time. Okay. First off, ordering from DigiKey is a little scary because they don't SSL their website. Oh, great. Yeah, so I had to call and give them my credit card number. Secondly, when you put a. So what you. Like, do you remember ordering stuff from like Price Watch sites in 1995? Uh, yes. Where you'd have to call, you'd like have a cart number, and then you'd call and give them your your cart number, and they'd charge your credit card over the phone. Did you that's, ever do that? That's what happens. That's what you're doing here. That's what I was doing here. I'm gonna replace that one. Wow. Yeah, I think if we were good at this, we would probably be much faster. In fact, actually, I'd say there's probably people in the comments screaming. Oh my god, look at these assholes. If you're using a flathead, the finer tip. Mm. Uh, the tips are one of those things I always look at when we go into people's like shops. And almost everywhere we go, people use the fat tip. The fat flat tip. Yeah. And I have it on good authority that goes all the way up to like Apple and Google and places like that where they have people who should really know what they're doing. And you know, soldering irons that are thousands of dollars. Yeah, not pretty, but you know, I'm just now half done. I think we should probably call it. Okay. Let me get Woo. this last two on. Oops. Oh my neck! It's building an ergonomic keyboard. Poor ergonomics on my neck. <laughs> the irony. <laughs> Ow. It's so delicious. Um, Norman Chan, how are you doing? Where are you at? Uh, I am th one, two, three rows done. I believe I have four, five, uh, six. So I, I'm half done, I think. Well, I'm doing columns. Um, and I'm finishing my third column right now. So, so I think we're exactly on the same pace. It's good. It's good that we're on the same pace. Uh, that means next episode we'll definitely finish this. And then get to the next step, which is hopefully keys. more fun, more soldering, um, more soldering. Yeah, we got to do resistors and stuff next. Um, and we'll be chatting about a bunch of stuff. 
If uh, people want to sign up and see where they can see this? Yes, go to tested.com slash premium. Uh, again, we're doing weeks of builds. We're doing building mechanical keyboards this week, another project next week, and, and some surprises down the line. Plus, we have a whole backlog of premium content for you guys to check out. Dozens so, of weeks. Of, hold on. There's, there's like a dozen week of builds on there now. There's so, many, many weeks of builds. You can watch us build a 3D printer, mm -hmm. a quadcopter. Yep. Um, a light sculpture? A, a paper craft. Pa oh, the paper craft uh, one was really good. We can do uh, a bunch of weeks of Lego, and we'll be doing this. The uh, Lego race? Yes, uh, for the neck, for, for foreseeable future. Um, so come back tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Uh, go to test.com for the rest of the series and return you to your regularly scheduled tested programming. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching.